Hey guys, it's Kelly. Today I've got an empties extravaganza. That's what I'm naming this because I have been saving up my empties for quite a while. I have not done an empties video in a minute. I've just been letting these pile up so we could do a full big empties video today. I've got makeup, skincare, hair care, a bit of everything. So if you're new here, hello, my name is Kelly. Here on this channel, I love using the makeup that I have. I love makeup, but I also love seeing progress on my makeup, using makeup up. So empties are especially fun for me. And if you are into this type of content, be sure to subscribe and let's go ahead and hop into it. This little bang, I'm like, come on, stay down. I tried to spray it into place. There we go. No, just go with it. Okay. I finished up two concealers, which is great. I've been trying to use up some concealers this year. I actually put myself on a concealer no-buy for the first few months of 2021. And because of that, I was able to use up these two. The first one being the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. I have one more shade of this that I have not used up, I'm pretty sure. But this shade is Classic Beige, and I think this is such a fantastic concealer. I actually took the stopper out of this one in order to use it all up. I have a video that I'll leave linked down below where I share how to remove a stopper, how to repress a powder, how to basically get every last drop of your product. So I'll have that linked down below if you wanna watch. I also just used up the Too Faced Born This Way. I had two of these. I finished another one a while ago and then I finally finished this one. I did not take the stopper out of this one though. It was already getting so messy. Like I'll kind of show you guys a little bit up close if you can see the product was already just globbing over the side so i knew if i took the stopper out it was about to be a disaster also i did the math and this guy was pretty old so i figured you know what i can't get any more out this way so i know i could get out a little bit more if i removed the stopper but i felt pretty accomplished with how much i'd already used up and again it was getting really messy as is so i knew if i took the stopper out we were gonna have a disaster out of these two concealers, I think they're extremely similar. So if you want a bargain option, I would go with the CoverGirl. They're both high coverage without being too dry. Like honestly, I really like both of these. I don't know that I'll repurchase the Too Faced. Like I said, I've used up two of these now and I do love it. But I think now on the market, there are so many great drugstore concealers. My favorite one is the Milani Conceal Plus Perfect, which I used up a while ago and I've been waiting to repurchase until I work through some concealers, but maybe the time is coming. Since I finished those two up, I've got a few others that I'm pretty close on, so I feel really great about that. One you saw in my Project Pan, this is the Glossier Prime Rich Moisturizer. Would not repurchase this one. It's so heavily fragranced that even the empty container is so pungent. It it smells good, don't get me wrong, but it's this very like powdery, floral, sweet scent. It definitely is very intensely hydrating, but I think you could get a very similar effect with a heavy duty moisturizer. So I liked it, but I don't necessarily, I, I used to like highly recommend this, but these days I think you could get away with a great moisturizer instead. It's just so fragrance, like your face will smell like that for hours. Okay, two that I used up today, I kind of had this moment like, whoa, these are gonna be added to the video because first of all, the Bite Mascara. This one I probably could get a little bit more out of, but as I was getting ready today and I'm doing my mascara, I was doing the math and I realized, wait a minute, I have had this open for far too long. So this is their Upswing Mascara. Like I mentioned, it's what I'm wearing currently. It's phenomenal. I was not sure about this when I first tested it out because mascara, I typically find that it reaches its peak at about one week. When I reviewed it, I wanna say I had been testing it for about two weeks and I was like, you know, it's okay, but it just got better and better and better. And for months, I've been shocked at how much product is in here. So I could see it not being for everyone because it's pretty volumizing. It can verge into the clumpy zone, but not on the level of something like Urban Decay Lash Freak. Like you don't have to be that particular. It doesn't get like too, too clumpy, but it will add a lot of volume. It's very, very dark, very pigmented black formula. I do get a tiny bit of transfer up by my brows, but that's more so my eye shape. I can't think of a mascara that doesn't transfer. It's just that some transfer more than others because of the shape of my eye. My lashes just like touch up here. 
If you don't have that problem normally, I don't know that you would have it with this, but I typically experience that with most mascaras. It's very, very expensive, even for a high-end mascara, but based on how long this has lasted me, like I said, I have had this tube open for about six months and I try not to go past three months. And that's why today I was like, wait a minute, let's do the math. But even after six months, like I could probably use this for another month. I'm not going to, that's why I'm adding it to this video, but I could. And then I used up this lip liner today. So this is Koki Warm Nude. You know it's a favorite. So that's what I'm wearing right now. I've got on Koki Warm Nude, plus my lip color is the Lip Bar Baby Bellini. And this is, I twisted it up today to apply it and I was like, oh, this is pretty much gone. So we'll put that in the video as well. I think this is the third one of these I've used up. It's at least the second. It's my go-to lip liner. I wear it most days. However, it has been recently being replaced, not fully, but partially, with the NYX lip liner and Nude Truffle. Let me swatch them both. This is Koki and this is NYX. They're kind of similar. NYX is a tiny bit deeper than Koki and a bit more neutral. But if I'm wearing a nude lip, you can pretty much guess that I am pairing it with one of these two lip liners. Oh, this bang. I gotta go through my stash because I feel like I have a backup of this somewhere. And if not, I'm gonna have to run to Rite Aid and buy a replacement because I love it. I can't be without it. I did it. I used up this foundation from CoverGirl. This is their Skin Milk from their Clean Fresh line. I used up the shade 520 Fair. This is uh, a pretty good shade match for me if I don't have a self tan. So like today I might be like a little tan for it. This definitely is pretty light. It has a weird smell. That's the downside for me. Kind of smells like bread or like, it smells to me like almond milk, but if you were to ask me like, what does almond milk smell like? I'm like, well, it doesn't really have a smell, but that's what this smells like. If you guys have tried this, please let me know how you would define the smell because it's strange. And it's not an added scent. It's very much just like, this is the natural smell of the product. This is easily the most polarizing foundation on the market. I have heard of people that completely love this and like swear by it and it's their tip top. And I have heard of people that think it is the absolute worst foundation out there. So I kind of fall more towards the, I really love this side. The coverage is light, but you can get it into like a medium zone. The finish is very natural, but still like can be made to look very dewy. It's just a very beautiful natural effect on the skin. Now, the people that I've heard that do not like this, I've heard of a handful of people that have had a reaction to it. And I was hearing for a while that that was due to like applying it over breakouts and some of the ingredients not working well with that. But I've actually been breaking out a lot recently and I've still been wearing this and I haven't noticed any problems with that. But what's funny, is I, my friend Makeup Molly texted me a while ago because she knows I love that foundation and she was like, wait, she originally hated it and she tried a new one recently and she said it performed completely different. So I don't know if there was like a batch issue. I try not to say like, oh, it was probably a batch issue. But with that foundation in particular, I'm so baffled by it that that could make sense that that was the case. Because like I said, my friend Molly hated it when she first tried it and then tried a new bottle of it recently and she said it performed completely different so oops that was Mr. all i don't know what's going on with this but personally i love it i will miss it i don't think i'm gonna repurchase it right away because i've got a lot of other foundations and skin tints to work through plus a few others i want to buy next but i could see myself repurchasing it one day because i really did love it Let's do some hair. I've got hair and skin too, but let's do hair because I get asked about what hair care products I use often. Right now I'm using the full Olaplex line except for I don't have number eight and I don't have number zero, but I use the rest of the line currently, but sometimes I like switch it out with other products. It depends on the day. However, some empties. First of all, this hairspray. This is from Eva NYC. It's their Shape Shifter Texturizing Hairspray. I like this a lot. It smells like vanilla. It's not the most stronghold hairspray, but it is a really good hairspray. It does leave like a little bit of crunchy in your hairspray, but here's the thing. Unless it's a completely soft hold hairspray that's gonna do nothing, there's always gonna be just like a touch of crunch, but it's not sticky or anything. I think this is a good hairspray. My Holy Grail hairspray, I don't think I'm gonna repurchase this one because my Holy Grail is the Kenra Volume Spray. And I just got like a giant bottle of it that I bought for my friend that works at a salon because that one is like my absolute favorite. I think it's the best hairspray on the market, but that Eva NYC one is good and it's a little bit more affordable. 
I have two dry shampoo empties. First of all, my favorite one. This is again from Eva NYC. This is their Freshen Up Dry Shampoo. This is not gonna be for everyone. If you struggle, okay, let me back up actually. If you have blonde hair, you will probably love this. If your hair is much darker than mine, I'm kind of like, some people tell me I have brown hair. Some people tell me I have blonde hair. I like to think I have light brown hair. You can let me know your thoughts down below, but I would say if your hair is quite a bit darker than mine, you will probably get a white cast with this because it's extremely powdery. And if you don't want a very powdery dry shampoo, you want one that's a little more touchable, doesn't really feel like much in the hair, skip this one because this is like next level powder but it's also next level effective. It is the most effective dry shampoo I have ever tried. Like it just soaks everything right up. Like if you're trying to train your hair to go a little bit longer, this is gonna be your best friend. It just absorbs everything. But again, it does have a bit of a powdery feel. I'm so confused too, cause it sounds like there's a little bit left, but the other day I was trying to use it and nothing was coming out. Maybe I'll give it one more try. I also picked up this one from Garnier now that Garnier is cruelty free. So I wanted to try one of their dry shampoos. This was only $5, but I was thinking maybe it'll be a good alternative to this because this one I think is about 12-ish, but this did not last me very long and this does because I don't need much of this, but I do need a lot of this. So honestly, I think this, <laughs> this one is a better value for me. But this is Garnier's Invisible Dry Texturizing Shampoo. It's not invisible. You, you will probably still get a white cast with this, but maybe less than others. I will say if you spray it as far away as you're supposed to, you, you won't really get much of a white cast, but it's also not that effective. I have to spray it like kind of close and then I do get a white cast and then I really brush it in and then it's gone. I think this is okay, but my friend tried it and she was like, that's the best dry shampoo ever. So it might depend on your hair type. Again, I don't think it's as intense as this one, but if you don't like that, you might prefer this one. And it's only $5, pretty accessible. So I would recommend it. The smell, they have a couple scents. This one is Mango Punch, and it definitely reminds me of something from my childhood. So I like this one. My heat protectant, this is the Moroccan Oil Perfect Defense Protect. Uh, I do like this one. The thing about heat protectants, it's almost hard to tell if they are working. You would almost just know if they weren't working. You know what I mean? But... I think this one worked well for me. I like it, I like the scent of it, but it's pretty expensive and Tresemme actually recently became cruelty free. They're now Logical Harmony certified. And when I was like back in high school, I would always use their heat protectant. So I think I'm gonna repurchase that one. Except lately I've been using the number seven from Olaplex, their oil that they say is a heat protectant as well. So I don't know that I'll purchase the Tresemme immediately, but that's probably the next one I'll get. More Moroccan oil, these are minis. This is their Luminous Hairspray. I like it, it's a fine hairspray, but it, I don't mean like fine like the mist, like it's fine, like it's okay. But again, doesn't touch my Kenra, and for the price, like the cost is similar, so I'd rather get the Kenra. And then the Dry Texture Spray is very good, but maybe I kind of want to find a drugstore alternative, especially now that Tresemme and Garnier are cruelty free. I feel like I could find a cheaper option for this, but it is very good. This is their dry texture spray. I don't wear this as much now that my hair is longer, but probably two years ago when I was wearing my hair a bit shorter and I had more of like a choppy blunt cut and I was wearing it a little more um, like textured and wavy, I used that every single day, but now I just wear my hair a little bit different, so I don't know that I would repurchase it, especially not at the price, but I might look for a cheaper alternative. This, I love it so much. Another Eva NYC, actually. This is their Main Magic 10-in-1 Primer. I spray this most days when I get out of the shower. Again, these days I've been using a bit more Olaplex, so when I get out of the shower, I use six and seven, but if I'm not using that, I usually spray this in when my hair is a bit damp. I would be careful spraying it on dry hair, depending on your hair type. Because if your hair is a bit more fine, like this might leave it like a little oily and weighed down. I get better results spraying it on damp hair. It's kind of like a spray on oil, but it's a lightweight oil. It's really, really nice. It leaves your hair soft and shiny. Oh, one more makeup. This is from Koki. This is their Set and Forget Long Lasting Makeup Spray. It looks so dirty. Can you see this? It just has like foundation and gunk all over it because I've had it sitting over in my area where I get ready. I get ready not at like a fancy vanity or anything. I get ready at just like a full length mirror. I sit on the floor and like do my makeup like that. 
Let me know where you guys get ready because I, for some reason, cannot get ready in my bathroom. At least not do my makeup because I'm like, I can't stand. I take a while to do my makeup just because like it's a fun process for me. I want to sit on the floor or in a chair and enjoy it. So I normally just sit on the floor in front of a mirror and this has been like sitting over with my products. And that's how it got a little bit dirty. This I've mostly been using just to spray my bar soap so that I can do my soap brows. That's how I use this one up. I wouldn't repurchase this. Really the only setting spray that I feel like I need these days, which is a bottle of Urban Decay All Nighter. I don't use setting spray every day, but when I do use it and I wanna lock my products in, that's my go-to. So I feel like I won't repurchase any more setting sprays for a while. I'm just not as into them anymore. Let's talk about my favorite sunscreen. This is the Super Goop Play SPF 50. I feel like I have turned so many of my friends, my personal life onto this. I will get like a text like, what sunscreen do you recommend? I'm always like, get the play. It's SPF 50. It's PA++++. Nope. It's PA++++. This one, I feel like I can skip primer with because it's so hydrating and it leaves my skin very, very glowy. When I wear just this, even without foundation over top, I've gotten compliments like, your skin looks so healthy. And I'm like, it's actually just this sunscreen. It just appears so radiant. So if you have oily skin, you might not like that about it. But especially if you have normal to dry skin, it just makes your skin look so glowy and it doesn't sink in too fast. It's kind of like a moisturizer that kind of sits on the skin for a while without absorbing too quickly. So I could see it not being for everyone, but personally it's my holy grail and I'm bummed that I've been out of it for a while now and I'm trying so hard to use up other sunscreens that I have before they go bad. But secretly I just cannot wait to go repurchase that one because it's the best. My cleansing balm, I think I've got two or three more days on, but I figured it's close enough I'd at least show you guys in this video. This is the Pharmacy Green Clean Makeup Melt Away Cleansing Balm. So you might be able to tell, like I've got just a tiny bit on the bottom. This is such an effective cleansing balm. It is not messy at all. I do have two alternatives for you though, cause it's pretty pricey. So if you don't want to spend this much, I would recommend the Versid one or the Holy Hydration Cleansing Balm from Elf. Elf. <laughs> They're both extremely similar, but this, it's still my favorite. It's the best out there. They sent me the limited edition apple scent, I think a month or two ago, and I have been waiting to finish this up so I can try the apple one because I think that'll be a lot of fun. Again, I try to avoid scent in my skincare, but when it's a cleansing balm and you wash it off, I'm not quite as concerned. Always lots of ordinary products. I love them with my whole heart. This is the hyaluronic acid. This used to be a bigger part of my skincare routine, but I haven't been as into hyaluronic acid recently, but theirs is a nice affordable option. If you do like hyaluronic acid, it's a great ingredient for dry skin. Just make sure you apply it on damp skin and then moisturize afterwards. You get the full benefit, but this is a good one. I probably will repurchase this eventually. I also used up their retinol 0.5 in squalane. I really love this stuff. This is my second bottle of this. I started with the 0.2 and then I moved up to the 0.5 and then I repurchased the 0.5. I feel like I see a pretty big difference in my skin from using this. My skin just looks smoother and brighter. I also like that it's in squalane. I feel like this does not irritate my skin. Again, I started with the lower concentration and then worked up pretty slowly. And I would recommend if you're a little bit concerned about the intensity of a new retinol, you can apply it over your uh, moisturizer in the beginning. I wanna say that's called buffering. No, there's like a word, there's a word for that, but it's not coming to my mind at this moment, but you can try that for a few nights and of course go on and off, maybe try just like once a week, twice a week, and then work your way up slowly. And when I started like that, I didn't notice any irritation at all. I also used up their salicylic acid 2% mask. This one can be pretty intense, but this is a great acne mask. I would not use it too often. I really, I don't even use this like once a week, just kind of whenever I feel like it. It gets a little bit messy though, cause the color of it, it's like a really deep charcoal color. So it is a little bit hard to wash off. I feel like it gets a bit messy, so be prepared for that, but it's extremely effective. If you are struggling with acne, it's 2% salicylic acid. They say you can use it twice a week on dry skin. I would be careful about doing it twice a week just because it is pretty intense. I used up the Harn... Har 
<laughs> the pharmacy honeymoon glow it looks like there's a little bit left in there but i have been just like trying to get it out and it will not come out so this is their aha resurfacing serum this is a nice gentle option if you do have sensitive skin again i do not use this too often about once a week ish but if you don't have sensitive skin and you want an alternative to it, I really like a serum from Derma E that I'm going to leave linked down below if you want an alternative to that that's a little bit more budget friendly. I won't say it's an exact dupe, but they're pretty similar. They both have lactic acid and glycolic acid, which are the AHAs. But lactic acid is a little bit higher up in this one and lactic, ac lactic acid is a little bit more gentle because of the molecule size. So I would recommend either one, but... If you tend to have a bit more sensitive skin, I would uh, steer you towards the pharmacy. I love this little guy so much. This is from Derma E. It's their Acne Blemish Control Treatment Serum. This is a mini I used up. I have a full size of it right now. I don't use this every day, but I do use it in my morning routine when my forehead is breaking out, which right now it really is. I have been very stressed recently and my skin is suffering the consequences but this is really great especially if you suffer from closed comedones which are basically just little bumps i get them a lot on my forehead but you could get them elsewhere they're kind of like little hard bumps that don't usually amount to like red blemishes but they're kind of under the skin and they're very tricky to treat this is really great at dealing with those so i would recommend this i remember sharing this in a video like two years ago when i first found it i mentioned it in a favorites video because my forehead was full of closed comedones and after a week of using that it had like almost completely cleared up like this is a star and then the josie moran 100 percent pure argan oil I like this it's a good oil but it's very expensive so i don't think i would repurchase this they did send this to me but i did like it it's not too heavy i feel like it absorbs well without leaving you like too oily and greasy so that was my empties extravaganza i promised you guys it was going to be a long one good luck editing kelly this is definitely going to be a long one but thank you guys so much for watching and i will go ahead and see you in my next one bye